Hello and welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I'm making my way through Born at Midnight by C.C. Hunter. If you haven't seen the other videos, you might want to do that before jumping into this one or else you might be confused. Links will be posted below. Chapter 25 Kylie skips a music event, claiming that she's in no mood to do anything involving teenage boys and acoustic guitars. Having been an actual musician for about 20 years, let me tell you something. That's way less exciting than most people seem to think that it is. Anyway, most of this was just an excuse so that she could email her mom instead. She lies throughout the entire email but figures that it's for a good reason. She lists doing horoscope readings at camp to ask not only for her parents' birth time but also for the birth times of all four of her grandparents. She feels like she's wasting her time in asking for so much but she figures that she's got nothing left to lose. Kylie then sits in front of the computer and obsessively clicks the refresh button until somebody calls. As she goes to answer the phone, she thinks about how Trey called her again at dinner and she still hasn't responded or even listened to his latest message. Her mom is honestly kind of vague about the entire thing and makes it seem like going to the closet to dig out this very important document would be too much of a pain. Why in the world that it's not kept in a safe is beyond me. Does anybody else do that? Store important documents like birth certificates and bonds in a fireproof safe? No? Okay then, moving on. Have you spoken with your dad? Her mom asked, lowering her voice. No, Kylie answered, and the feeling of abandonment swelled in her chest. You're not angry at him, are you? Her mom asked. Hell yes, he left me to live with you. Honestly, I don't know what I'm feeling. It's not good for you to be angry, Kylie. A. Do you want to know what's good for helping your kid right after you decide to get a divorce and then your husband just walks out on both of you? For sure it's not shipping your kid off to camp for the entire summer and refusing to actually address any issues about the divorce and father abandonment. This isn't going to come up and end with Kylie feeling abandoned by her mom and like her mom doesn't care. Nope. No way that this could possibly result in any of that happening. I kind of feel like the mom forfeited any right to tell Kylie how to process emotions the second she decided to ship Kylie off to camp. Like, it's really obvious that mom doesn't care about her kid. At all. Kylie then asks her mom why she and her dad are getting a divorce. Mom continues to win the Mother of the Year award and insists that this has nothing to do with Kylie. And, look, I get it. I've mentioned in an earlier video that it's important to try and remove yourself from a toxic situation. We don't see the relationship other than the day that the dad left, but at the same time, it sounds pretty toxic to me. That being said, when you're in a relationship and you've got kids together, something big like divorce isn't going to be just about you and your spouse anymore. And the fact that Kylie's mom still doesn't understand why Kylie is having all of these emotional episodes is, quite frankly, a little horrifying. How much of a self-absorbed a-hole do you have to be to not understand that divorce and parental abandonment is difficult on a child? Kelly's mom then promises to find her birth certificate and to email her later. Kelly begs for her to be quick about it, but again, Kelly knows not to get her hopes up. After hanging up, Kelly contemplates calling her dad and eventually decides to rip that bandaid off. However, she ends up dialing her dead grand's number instead and Kelly feels grief over her loss all over again. Just then, Dylan knocks on Kylie's door and says that she has a surprise for her. Kylie is upset over everything and says that she's not in the mood, but Della opens the door anyway and... Oh, look! Another <laughs> cliffhanger. Ugh. Chapter 26. As I'm sure that a lot of you have already guessed, the person that Della brought was Trey. She said that she found him sneaking into the camp, so better Della find him than somebody else. Trey tries to go into Kylie's room, but Della stops him and asks Kylie if she should throw him to the wolves. Kylie says that it's okay, so Della goes to leave. But before she goes, she warns Kylie that Kylie is going to have to be the one to sneak him out. Kylie is kind of angry that Trey clearly went out of his way to come and see her, despite the fact that she hasn't been responding to any of his messages or anything. Like, geez, dude, take a hint. He asks if she's been crying and then holds her when she says yes. She just kind of lets him assume that this is about the divorce and Nana dying rather than to actually fill him in on the true purpose of the camp. Kylie is suddenly aware that they're alone in the cabin right then. And she feels weird because this is when things would usually fall apart between her and Trey because he would always pressure her for sex. She then says that he shouldn't have come and that he could get her in trouble. The number one rule at camp is no normals. 
They start making out because Kylie apparently has the spine of a jellyfish. However, when Trey starts to take off her bra, she suddenly remembers that not only did he dump her, but he was also seen with that arm candy. She tries to put a stop to it, but Trey uses emotional manipulation and says that he loves her in order to continue. Um, thankfully for Kylie's inability to actually stand up for herself, Soldier Dude shows up. This is really a great motivation for her to get off from Trey and move away from him. However, Trey only just sinks with his downstairs snake and gets offended. Not again, Trey muttered, and he sounded angry. He always got a little mad when she first stopped him. One time he even dropped her off at her house without speaking to her. That probably should have been your first clue, Kylie. If he's pressuring you for sex and gets this upset when you say no, he's a canoe that should be dumped as soon as possible. Kylie also can't stop comparing him to Derek. She feels like Derek wouldn't pressure her into sex and then pout like a petulant child when she says no. And look, a love interest that I now hate more than Derek. Didn't think that the bar could possibly get any lower, but then Trey showed up and started to dig. She finally calls him out on his BS. He doesn't get to break up with her simply because she wouldn't put out, go have sex with some other girl, and then go sinking back to Kelly simply because he's familiar with her. She even asked Trey if he told the other girl that he left her too. She also accidentally calls him Derek. Which, dude, as if her telling you no wasn't enough of a get out signal. Kelly says that Trey has to leave now. Trey mentions that he heard from somebody that this was a camp for delinquents, and is that true? Kylie just tells him to leave. After seeing Trey off, Kylie immediately runs into Frederica, who should probably be happy that Kylie is sneaking a guy into the camp because it means that Kylie isn't having sexy times with Lucas. But nope, Frederica is a one-note character and she can't let this go despite it going against everything she said earlier. Frederica threatens to tell Holiday, so Kylie beats her to it. She apologizes and says that he hadn't told her that he was coming. Holiday is just like, <sighs> okay. Back in her cabin, Kylie calls her dad. He's only on the line long enough to reassure her that he still loves her and that he'll see her for the parents' weekend before hanging up. Then Kylie mopes about her confusion between Trey and Derek. She thought that she was attracted to Derek because he reminded her of Trey, but then she was with Trey and she got confused and called him Derek. She's interrupted from this by Miranda and Della coming back and then finding over who gets to use the computer first. Kylie comes out only to yell at them to knock it off. Della asks about Trey, although Kylie insists that he's old news, but when Kylie explains why he's old news, the girls get angry over Trey on Kylie's behalf. Della kind of feels bad about the entire thing. Like, maybe next time you should have asked if Kylie wanted to see him at all? And then Miranda wants to know if Kylie's a virgin, because his book is apparently going to go there. Ugh. Chapter 27 Kylie admits that she is a virgin and feels like it somehow makes her a freak. Ugh. However, Miranda is quick to say that she also hasn't found the right person and that she's still a virgin too. Miranda tries to ask Della, but Kylie quickly changes the subject when Della seems hesitant to reply. Kylie tells him about how she ran into Frederica and how she needed to tell Holiday immediately about Trey's presence at the camp. One of the girls mentions the rumor has it that Frederica's parents are rogues, so Kylie finally asks what that means. They explain that for werewolves, it means going off and eating things on the not approved list. Pets are mentioned, and Kylie thinks about her lost cat. Kylie also tells him about how she asked her mom for birth times, but she knows as well as Della and Miranda that Kylie's mom likely won't get around to it. They then sit around and talk about if Della can drink soda, and then this happens. Oh, and some things have really bad effects on me, like broccoli. What happens if you eat broccoli, Kylie asks. Explosive, really bad gas, Kylie made a face. I think that happens to everyone. Nope, Miranda looked over her shoulder. She's right, nothing is worse than a vampire fart. Except, she looked at the screen and started typing, except a witch's fart after she eats a bean burrito. I had to read this and so do you. After the girls stop giggling over their fart jokes, Della then says that she's not a virgin. She says that she was with a guy named Lee before she turned and that it was nice. However, she kept her distance from Lee for a while, claiming to be sick. She went to him after a while and tried to kiss him, but she was cold and he stopped her. He told her that he didn't want to be with her if she was still sick, which makes Della depressed even just talking about it now. 
The girls try to comfort Della, which is actually kind of sweet. They ask why Della didn't try to explain to him about her condition, but Della goes on to say that Lee was honestly kind of racist towards her when he found out that Della was half-white versus Lee being a second-generation Chinese-American. Wow. Yeah. Forget him, honey. Kylie tells Della that she's young and pretty and that she'll find somebody else. And yes! Less of the idea that you have to make the boy that you fell in love with when you were 12 love you until you both die. Okay, thanks. Bye. Kylie then asks Della and Miranda how old that they'll both live. Apparently, it's around 150 for both witches and vampires, but they say that they've heard that fairies can live for upwards of 500 years. This just makes Kylie upset that her mom is how she is and won't instantly dig out buried documents in the middle of the night. Which, I get that it's frustrating, but it's also insanely late. Give her time. Jeez. But Kylie asks Miranda if there isn't any sort of magic spell that she could do to encourage Kylie's mom to get the info to Kylie faster. Miranda then teases Kylie and asks Kylie to touch her nose and say, Miranda is a goddess. But then she says that Kylie has a new email. And who just leaves their email account sitting open on a public computer? Anybody can come into the cabin and start going through Kylie's emails. And this ends on what I'm classifying as another acceptable cliffhanger. However, I have a feeling that the issue is going to be resolved in all of about two seconds in the next chapter, much like with Helen finding out that if Kylie had a brain tumor or not. Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. If you enjoy my videos, please hit that subscribe button. I post a new snark video every Monday. Don't forget to check out my other snark of Stalking Jack the Ripper and The Plan. If you've already seen those, then you can head over to Tumblr for my main book snarks. And if all of that is somehow still not enough for you, then you can become my patron supporter for just $1 a month and read a bunch of bonus snarks that aren't up anywhere else. See you next week, guys.